What's up guys, it's your favorite QB coach. We got another professional golf swing analysis today. It's gonna to be Yusaka Miyazato. If you don't recognize that last name, it is I, wait, I Miyazato? I Miyazato? Or something like that on the JLPGA. But anyways, brother and sister, both playing Japanese professional golfers, great golf swings in their own right. But today's live show, we're gonna be talking about does Yusaka shallow out the golf club? And then also we're gonna be talking about the trail elbows roll and what happens when it gets stuck behind the body. So if you guys haven't already, Hit that little like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. Let's go do this thing. I'm a go as hard as I can, dog. Tell the green reaper, come and take me. I'm not afraid of falling to the very bottom. No depth. All right, guys, so for everyone that's new to this channel, Mike's OG Academy is all about golf instruction. So if you guys are trying to figure out what you got to do in the golf swing to get better, are you looking at professional golf swings, golf interviews, again, anything you guys need to know about golf instruction, we're doing it here. So... Again, just like that last little segment, hit that red subscribe button and let's go hop into this video. All right guys, so if you guys are just catching up with this series, basically we're doing a bunch of Japanese professional golf swings. Now the reason for us doing these uh, analysis is because we're gearing up for our seminar in Japan. It's gonna be at Grandage Golf Club in Nara. It's a western part of Japan. It's such a beautiful course too as well. If you guys wanna check out the amenities and what the course looks like, go ahead and hit that link in the description. And you guys are gonna get shot over to the website and you guys kinda of check it out. But yeah, we're prepping for the seminar. We want to kind of talk about the Japanese traditional instruction are saying that the Japanese don't shallow out the golf club, right? So in every single one of these analysis, we want to kind of identify that they actually do shallow out the golf club. As well, we're also going to be talking about different types of shallowing out the golf club. If you guys watched the last video with uh, Mamika Higa, you kind of saw that she shallowed out the golf club but did it from a different position, right? So we're kind of keeping on that trend and we're going to be talking about that. Another major key point take home is going to be kind of the transition move, which we also talk about on Mika's them liking to kick their trail knee into internal rotation a little bit too early. What does that cause with the trail elbow as well? We're going to talk about that. So let's get into the first part where we compare from the down the line view. It's going to be me versus Yusaka. Let's go into it. All right, guys, so we got me versus Yusaka. We got me on the left of the screen. We got Yusaka on the right of the screen. We're going to first establish that both of us shallow at the golf club, so let's kind of get into it. So we're going to go over Yusaku first. Now, just a little forewarning, the camera is kind of moving a little bit, and it's shifting off to the right. So his hand path relative to club head path that we're about to highlight is going to look a little bit different than mine, but I would argue that we're pretty similar in transition because we are at a pretty similar position at the top of the swing. So let's just go highlight that real quick. So we're going to use a yellow line for the hand path. We're going to use a blue or not line excuse me a yellow circle and then we're going to be using a blue circle for the club head so if we get that initiating part we can see that the club starts working just like everyone else a little bit down and then it starts working out to the left from our view so let's go draw a circle right there we're going to go draw a circle on the hand path we can also see that the hand path is actually working which i think is pretty typical with the japanese i see that when they shallow out the golf club they do it with hand path working in a slightly different way than what I typically see me. And I think it really translates into kind of the way they push forward too, which we'll get to here. But his hand path is falling behind the circle and then slightly down, right? Let's go take a look at his next little position here. So we're going to go right about here. So just like we see with a lot of people who shell out the golf club, we can see that the initial part of the circle is going down and then kind of goes back up and then it loops out a little bit and then it starts going down towards the golf ball, right? That's a pretty typical look into how the hand paths work. If we look at, or excuse me, the club head paths work. Now let's go take a look at the hand path. We can see that his is dropping slightly behind and now it's starting to work out towards the golf ball as he starts to churn and rotate towards the target. Let's just keep going with this. Um, we can see the club head is going to reach its pretty much its highest point right about here. Let me redraw that circle. Ah. Okay, we're going to have to move this guy down real quick, or maybe that circle is just going to be that big. Okay, it's just going to be that big. But we can see that hand path is going down and out towards the ball, and then we see that club head has reached its highest point, right? And now we're going to start seeing it go down towards the golf ball. So let's get into the next click, which would be roughly right around here. And then we're going to draw another circle right there on the club head. It's another big circle, sorry guys, huddle. You gotta love huddle sometimes. Especially when the camera angles are kinda like his as well. But now we can start seeing that the club head is working out down towards the golf ball. And then he gets into a really good, I would say, P6 position. He's in a pretty solid spot here. We're gonna talk about that trail level being a little bit behind the body at this point and then what it causes for release pattern. 
but that's pretty much showing that he does shallow out the golf club. So if we get up to the top, we can see that initial lowering of the golf club, right? The geometric center of that golf club is lowering, then it's going out and up, and then it starts going back down and out towards the golf ball like that, right? So that's shallowing out the golf club. So Yusaku is a Japanese golf professional and he does shallow out the golf club. So we know that that's the case. Now let's go look at mine. So we're gonna see a slightly different look in the way that our hands work in transition as well as club head might be a little bit differently as well, but it, we're pretty similar. I would consider ourselves, I call it more so the traditional model. We both kind of have lead arm on the shoulder line. We're not too high up, we're not too far below. Our club shafts aren't really crossed or laid off or anything. I think I kind of call this the traditional top of the swing position that's you know pretty standard that you see through a lot of just classical swings out there. Not to say that you guys have to do it this way, I'm just saying that's kind of what I see when I do see this. So let's go down. So again, we're gonna see my hand path initially work more out as opposed to behind, right? I think the big reason why that happens is because I'm using my lower body a little bit differently again, right? And we're gonna kind of highlight that here in a sec, but let's go take a look. So club head is working down initially, right? Now we're gonna start seeing it working outwards. And then we're gonna see my hand path is also working down and out towards the golf ball. And then mine is a little bit different than most people, which I actually kind of prefer a little bit more so my look, as opposed to some of the tour players you're gonna see, but that's just kind of personal preference. But you can see that my club head doesn't necessarily go up at that point as much as let's say Yusaka's did. And also like when we looked at Cameron Champ's video, we could also see that and Brooks Kepka they go up and then out, right? Part of it's a little bit is camera angle, and then another part of it too as well is I'm not necessarily getting as much ulnar deviation in this trail wrist as they usually do, which is something that could be could and could not be a bad thing, but let's not get too bogged down with those details because that's not the important part of this analysis. So again, we can see the club head is tracking behind the hands, right? The hands are working a little bit out and down. And then once we start getting into my throwing position, we can see that again i'm in a pretty classic position six i would say my toe is a little bit more turned down towards the ground and then obviously my hands are a lot lower than um than yusaka's just because i've gone into flexion a little bit more and i've i've rotated a little bit differently than he has but we can both or we can um agree that we both shout out the golf club right the club head fell slightly behind the hands in transition right so that that establishes that we both did that so anyways, guys, uh, if you guys are watching this on our Japanese channel, you guys are watching the translation below, just realize, even though the traditional Japanese golf instructors are going to say that the golf club does, should not shallow and that it doesn't shallow, it actually does, right? And that's been proven a long time ago in America. Um, we know the geometric center of the golf club with good players falls slightly behind the hands. Now, it always varies relative to the player, right, and what they're trying to do but it does fall slightly behind the hands. You're never gonna see a professional, a really good player, actually get the club head working the opposite way, right? There might be a couple out there that I haven't seen personally, but everyone that I've seen typically gets the club head falling slightly behind the hands, right? So that is shouting out the golf club. Now, let's talk a little bit about, we're gonna get us both down into like a position six, and we're gonna go highlight something with the elbow, and then we're gonna go hop over to the face on view, and then you guys are gonna kinda of see a little bit more what I mean. But if we take a look at Yusaka's el elbow relative to my trail elbow, mine's a little bit more in front of the body, so mine's here. His is a little bit more behind the body. So the main reason why I think he did that is going to be the way that he pushes his pressure forward in transition, and we're going to highlight that here in a sec, but just something to keep note of. If you guys are seeing that your trail elbow is getting stuck behind the body, you're probably not using the body correctly or the way I prefer in transition. So let's go hop over to that face on view and take a deeper look. So we're gonna go hop into the face on now. So just a quick glance, I would say our swings look pretty similar, right? I would say maybe I got a little bit more hip rotation. I possibly got a little bit more width at the top of the swing and then my knee structure is a little bit different, right? But the macro ideas behind this uh, little section here on the face on, we wanna kind of show you the differences between how we use our knees in transition and then how that gets a player possibly getting the elbows stuck in behind them, right? Cause that's what we established in the last few. From there, we're going to really quickly go into release patterns and how getting that elbow stuck behind your body in transition usually translates into a certain release pattern. Okay, so let's go hop in. So first off, let's just take a look at um, 
Yusukur, let's go look at the way his knees work, right? So he has a pretty traditional way that he's losing it using his lower body in transition, right? So if we get him down to about lead arm parallel, we can see that his trail knee has kicked into internal rotation, right? So he's not as bad as I've seen other um, JPGA Tour players and then JLPGA Tour players. He's not in like a horrible, horrible spot here, but he's definitely kicked in a little bit more for them, the preference I would prefer. A good thing too that we kind of see is that his lead knee is actually externally rotating a little bit, so he is clearing while he's doing this a touch, which is nice. And if we go take a look at the pelvis line, he's actually still relatively in a bit of LPT. So he again, he's not too far out of position at this point. Now, if we go take a look at my difference or kind of the way I'm pushing into uh, my lead side, is going to be slightly different, right? So the main thing is we're going to see that trail knee has not kicked in as much as Yusakura. So if we go take a look at that. So I'm over at 176 to 177 range. So I've hardly kicked in that knee at all. I've kind of braced with that knee. And maybe, if anything, externally rotated that a little bit in transition. And then my lead knee is roughly right around the same in terms of externally rotating than his. So let's go take a look. Uh, I would say I'm in a little bit of more, I probably have a little bit more left pelvic tilt than he does at this point. And then um, I would start saying that his shoulder line is a little bit more level than mine is at this point as well. And let's kind of just draw some arrows so you guys can kind of see that visually. But his is kind of this way, mine is a little bit more, right? So all in all, just to review it, I have a little bit more left pelvic tilt. I definitely haven't kicked my trail knee in as much as he has, and then my left shoulder is a little bit lower. So let's kind of see how that translates into that position six to where he gets that elbow stuck behind. And let's go see what happens here. So we take him down a couple more clicks down to that right around, I would call this position. Now we're going to start seeing the classic... I call it coming out of LPT a little bit early, right? Raising the left side of the pelvis a little early, kicking that knee in just a touch more. And then we're starting to see his lead knee extend a touch too. So let's go take a look at that. So once we, uh, let's just draw an angle first established. So if we go take it as trail knee again, we can see it's kicked in a little bit more than it had at that position five. And let me get this angle on just a little bit better. So he's roughly somewhere right around here again. 163 right now if we go take a look at his pelvis and just draw a line we can see that it's pretty much level at this point or if anything in right pelvic tilt which means the left side is a little bit higher than the right and then if we really key in and zoom in on that elbow we can see that it's trapped from the body it's a little bit easier to tell from the down the line view that it's trapped from the body but you guys are going to be able to see that he's a little bit stuck in this position now if we go take a look at mine there's a couple things that are a little bit different my hands are a little bit lower to the ground right now, one of the reasons is because I have a little bit longer arms. Another reason as well is because I have extended the trail elbow a little bit more than him. I have a little bit more width than he does. And then another reason as well is going to be the way I use my pelvis. I would argue I have a little bit more anterior pelvic tilt or tilting down of that pelvis, which then gives the elbow a little bit more room to get in front of you, right? So I want you guys real quick to stand up. I want you to push your pelvis down and back like you're squatting. And notice how that gives yourself more room to get that elbow in front of your body, right? Now, if you do it the opposite way, kind of how um, Yusakura is doing over here, he's going to get a little bit stuck, okay? So let's go take a look at my troll knee real quick. We're going to see that I pretty much stayed at where I was, right? So I'm roughly anywhere from 179 to 177. Pretty much stayed where I'm at. Um, if we take a look at my pelvis line too, I am still, I would say slightly in LPT, just a touch, but not too much, but I'm pretty much where I want to be. And then obviously if we take a look at the shoulder axis, I would say that I have a little bit lower left shoulder or lead shoulder than Yusakara does have at this time, right? So that's how he's getting the elbow stuck. So let's review that real quick because we did say a lot of like terms that probably some of you guys don't know. So what he did differently was Yusakara so more so kicked forward, kicked his knee in, and then basically went like this and got the elbow stuck behind him. I'm actually keeping my pelvis a little bit lower, keeping my body a little bit lower and getting the pelvis kind of pushing backwards a little bit, which then gives me time to get that elbow more on front. And that's the main reason why I'm not stuck here, right? And then let's quickly go over kind of release patterns. So with that stuck position, what we're gonna kind of see right here is he's gonna have a little bit of a flip roll. See how that right arm chases or hand is chasing through the shot right there and he 
gets the right hand above the left really early, right? That's a typical way the Japanese teach the swing, is getting that right hand over really quick, and that's kind of that flip re-roll release or flip roll release pattern. And if we take a look at kind of how I'm coming into the golf ball, we're gonna see that I'm driving and holding, right? At that same position right here, if we zoom in on my hands, we can see a pretty big difference in the release pattern, right? My right hand is still underneath the left. His is already like that, right? So again, the main reason why I believe that a player who has a little bit more of that release pattern and a little bit more of that transition move is gonna be not as efficient as someone who has a little bit more of the drive hold is because we took our understanding of ball flight laws in terms of 85% of the initial direction of where that club or that golf ball is gonna start is where that face points. If you can keep that in your mind, common sense then tells us we probably wanna have control over where this points, right? So do you wanna have a lot of closure right around the impact or would you rather be a little bit steadier and have a little bit less closure, right? You still want some a little bit less. And that's kind of the thing that we've been preaching for a long time here over at Mike's OG Academy. And that's why I think our, a lot of our students are some of the best ball strikers in their foursome, some of the best ball strikers in the tournaments that they play, and just best players in general is because they understand that they need to control where this club face points. And they're being able to do it with the shallow motion, but not just shallowing out the club. They also use the body correctly, right? Which is, again, what I think the Japanese are missing out on. So anyways, guys, uh, that's pretty much the end of this analysis. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button below. Leave us a comment if you guys want to see some other types of Japanese professional golf swings or if you want other topics addressed. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And also, a quick little side note too as well for everyone who watched all the way to the end. Again, there will be a link in the description below to our Google Docs where you guys can sign up for the Kiwi Coach Seminar. Again, it's going to be in Nara, Japan. It's at Grandage Golf Club. It's going to be June 9th, June 10th, June 11th, June 12th, June 13th, and then June 14th. If you guys want to know the specific dates as well, there will also be another link to a video we just posted on our YouTube a couple days back where we talk about the seminar in depth. So go ahead and check out all those videos. Check out the links. Leave us some emails if you've got any questions about anything. And uh, yeah, best of luck out there, and uh, see you guys soon.